In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to make a floating bar chart. Some people also call this a Gantt chart because it looks like a Gantt chart you would use for project management, but it's also called a floating bar chart. The data set we're, go we're going to look at here is a Makeover Monday data set, and I will provide a link to that in the details of this recording. Also, you can go ahead and hit the subscribe button and get all the latest updates for any new videos that I create. So this particular data set is looking at the percent of people with mental health symptoms, uh, men versus women, for different age ranges. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a floating bar chart that shows the difference between the men and the women. Let me show you what I mean. So the first thing, let's look at the data, and we have age range and gender, and then the percent with symptoms. Now, I, first off, I'm going to format my my uh, percentages. So default properties, number format. And because it's already multiplied by 100, I'm just going to use custom number and set the suffix to a percent sign. OK, so what I want to do is I want to calculate the difference between the men and the women. So to do that, I'm going to first create a calculated field that returns men. So if the gender equals men, then I want to return the percent with the symptoms. Okay. Now, in order to be able to calculate the difference between the men and the women, what we'll need to do is we'll need to make this a fixed level of detail expression. So I'm going to say fixed on the age range. I want to sum that value, my calculation. Okay, so this is saying for each age range, if they're men, then return the percent of symptoms. Uh, let's hit OK there, and let's drag that on top of the numbers, and we can see this 9.1% for men is ignoring the gender. So that's why we can compare it across the genders. Let me show you the difference if I remove the level of detail expression. And if I hit OK here, you'll see I only get one value for the men, and I get nulls for the ad all adults and the women. So let's hit undo. And then we want to duplicate that for the women. And let's call this women. And all I need to do is just change my if statement. And if I put that onto the measure value shelf, I can now see the women value all the way across the view. The next thing I want to do is I want to create a calculation that's the difference. So I'm going to do the sum of the women minus the sum of the men, and hit OK. And when I drag that into the view, we can now see, irrespective of the gender, we can see we're comparing 26 to 9.10, so 16.9. And I'm going to go ahead and also set the number format for those three fields. So I'm going to highlight all three of them, right click, default properties, number format, go to number custom, set it to one decimal, and change the suffix to a percent sign. OK, great. So now we have all of our data the, the way that we would like it. So let's build the visualization. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring age, rate, age range into the view. And I'm going to drag the uh, women into the column shelf. Or actually, let me put the men on the column shelf. And you'll see I've got 9.1%. Uh, I'm going to change the mark type to a Gantt bar. And then I'm going to drag this difference calculation onto the size shelf. And you'll see now that the, the male, it starts at the men at 9.1%, and it goes up to the, the female value, which will be uh, 27%. Now I'm going to go ahead and put both the men and the women onto the detail shelf. That makes them available in the tooltip, and I can verify my calculation. So I can see the age range is 16 to 24. The men is 9.1, the women is 26, and the difference is 17. OK, so uh, yeah, that I'm pretty much done at this point. But what I want to do now is I want to put a circle in the middle that represents all age ranges. So to do that, I'm going to drag gender onto the filter shelf. And when I pick all adults, notice how the bars don't change at all. The bars don't change because I have written these two calculations as level of detail expressions. So when I fix it on age range, it's ignoring the filter that I put on the gender. Okay, so now I can take the percent of symptoms and put it on the columns. I'm gonna change that to be a circle. 
I'm going to take the difference off of the size shelf. Maybe I'll move that to detail. And I'm going to create this as a dual axis chart. Synchronize. I'm going to go to my all marks card and I'm going to remove measure values from, from that shelf. I don't really need it there. I'm going to make maybe my Gantt bar uh, maybe a gray grayish color. Make my circle, which represents all adults. Maybe I'll make that like a, a reddish color. I'm going to put a maybe put a border on it as well, maybe a white border, and make it a bit bigger. And there we go. So now we can see the difference uh, between the men and the women by age range, uh, with those that with symptoms of mental illness. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, maybe hide the header for the the axis on the top, and we're all done with our visualization. So this is called a floating bar chart. Let's look at one more example with Superstore this time. So I'm going to add a new data source for, uh, for Sample Superstore. And let's say we want to look at it uh, by year across the subcategories. So in other words, I want to compare maybe 2018 to 20, or 2019 to 2020. So I'm going to keep those, and let's put sales on there. So I'm going to look at the difference in sales between these two years. So how can we go about doing that? Well, we have to write two calculations. So I'm going to create a calculated field, and I'm going to call this sub, uh, let's see, let's call this one 2019 subcategory sales. And I'm going to fix it on subcategory. And then I'm going to get the sum. So I'm going to say if the year of order date is equal to 2019, then I want to return sales. And so the same process we just went through with the last calculation in the other example. And I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm going to call this one 2020 subcategory sales. And in my calculation, I just need to change the year to 2020 and hit OK. All right, so let's start building our view. So let's take subcategory and put that into the rows. Let's take our 2020 sales and put that on the columns. And we want to compare the difference between 2020 and 2019. So uh, let's, let's call this the difference. Let's say, I'm, actually I'll give it a better name, 2020 versus 2019 sales. And I'm going to bring in my the sum of my 2020 sales minus the sum of my 2019 sales. I think I have this backwards, so let me change that. Uh, let's see, yeah. So I, I believe I want to do it like that, hit OK. I can verify this by putting the 2019 and 2020 onto the detail shelf. So, uh, so for example, for accessories, the value, sh <clears throat> the floating bar should start at 42,000 and should end at 60,000. So I'm going to change my marks card to a Gantt bar. And if I get this difference calculation backwards, it's easy enough to change. So let's drag that to the uh, detail shelf. And we can see we've got uh, 59,000 uh, uh, and 41,000. OK, I think this, but we have a negative 18,000, which is a bit confusing because the sales actually went up. So I'm going to swap my calculation around. OK, and now my bars are going the wrong direction. So all I need to do on my column shelf is I need to put 2019 sales on my column shelf. And there we go. So now we started at 41. We went up to 59, and that's an 18,000% increase. Now some of, this, some of the uh, sales, so for example, let's see if we can find one here where the sales decreased year over year. OK, here we go. Machines has decreased year over year. I may want to compare those so I can highlight the ones that have decreased. So I'm going to create another calculated field, and I'm going to call it uh, I'm going to call it increase or uh, or increased, and I'm just going to say my my uh, difference. So this field, uh, let's see, let's drag it on from the view, is bigger than zero. That's going to give me a Boolean calculation. I can drag that onto the color shelf, and now I can see which subcategories have increased or decreased versus prior year. So the ones that are true, I'm going to maybe make those maybe a gray, because I want the other ones to stand out. And I want the falses to maybe be a red. 
and now we can see which ones have decreased versus the prior year. So two methods for doing that. Uh, both of them require level of detail expressions, but again, you're basically building a Gantt chart, but we're not using a traditional project management time series. Like in other words, uh, we're not measuring the duration. In this case, we're just measuring the difference between two values. I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Have a great day.